Today we're installing our budget brake kit for 9 inch rear ends from Quick Performance. And we are back. So two videos ago, we installed our trick chassis nine inch rear end on our twin turbo Camaro chaos theory here. And we got everything buttoned up except for the brakes. So while we were waiting on our brakes to arrive in the last video, I showed you guys how to do a proportion valve mod to get ready for the rear disc brakes. And that was just a simple spring swap. Uh, you can go back and watch that video. The part numbers for the springs are in that video description. So today we actually got our brake kit in. Now guys, this is probably about the lowest budget option without having to fabricate anything that you can get to do a uh, disc brake conversion on a nine inch rear end. It comes with your calipers, it comes with your brake pads, comes with two rotors. You can get drilled and slotted, but it's an additional charge. And then it comes with the brackets and the retaining plates for your axle bearings. It also comes with the hardware to attach the caliper brackets to the retaining plates. What, but what it does not come with is the hardware to attach your retaining plates to the axle. So you've got two options there. You can either go to the hardware store and just get some regular nuts and bolts, or you can order this T-bolt kit from Quick Performance or from Trick Chassis. And uh, I prefer the T-bolt kit because you don't have to try to hold a wrench on the backside to keep them from turning uh, while you're torquing these down. So. I believe this was about $20, and it comes with your T-bolts, your nuts, your washers, uh, everything you need. Now, before we get started, I do want to say we've got a little issue. I actually paid $75 extra for a brake line kit. Now, these are the brake lines that I was sent. I'm pretty sure there's a mix-up because these are like the type of brake lines you would use on front brakes which kind of makes sense because these are front gm calipers uh, as a matter of fact i think they're pretty similar to the calipers that came stock on the front of chaos theory here but these are not what i paid for the kit that i paid for was from quick performance and it's supposed to come with a main line and an adapter to adapt your factory main brake line over to an an line and then it comes with the AN line, comes with a T and two more AN lines to go to each side of your axle. And then it comes with fittings to screw into the calipers here to adapt them to AN fittings. So I'm not sure what the mix up is guys. Um, I, would, I would think that these probably just come with this kit already, uh, but I don't know if they sent me the wrong thing or if possibly it's coming in another shipment and uh, you know this stuff just got here before it did and the bad news is since it's Saturday you know I can't get a hold of quick performance or trick chassis until Monday morning but I wanted to go ahead and get these installed so that's what we're gonna do and we'll just have to work out the rest in a future video uh, hopefully I can get that all straightened out and and get us hooked up so this is actually a pretty simple process and we're just gonna go ahead and dive into it so we're over here on the passenger side of the car. That way is the back of the car. We have our retainer plate, and you'll notice there's a cutout here that fits over our bearing. Now the bearing sticks out just a little bit here. So what we're gonna do, you can orient these brakes several different ways, but what they tell you to do is put it at the back up here toward the top. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our bracket, this part, is gonna go toward the back and up close to the top. This big part here is gonna go closer to the bottom. And of course our cutout here is gonna go toward the bearing, so toward the rear end. So we're gonna slide it on just like this. We're gonna line up our holes and we're gonna put our four T-bolts in. That one right there. Then our washer, and then our nut.
Next, we're just going to go around and snug them all up evenly. Then if you notice, we've got a hole in our axle here. Well, this hole is to give you access to torque these bolts. So you can spin this around and line it up with each hole. And we're going to torque these to 30 foot-pounds. There we go. Now the next thing we have to do is install our caliper brackets. These things look like they're pretty much identical, so it really doesn't matter which one you grab from side to side. Just grab one and come out here and throw it on. So what you want to do is run your bolts in from the outside in. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going from the outside in with my bolts. And I'll go ahead and throw two of them in there. like that then you have these little spacers the spacers go on next they're going to go in between your two brackets then you just put your bracket on with the open end facing the back just like that throw your little nylock nuts on the back And of course, we're going to snug it up. You're going to need a 9/16th wrench or socket. Now it says to torque these to 20 foot-pounds. You want to torque the nut on the back, not the bolt, guys. Uh, I'm just going to snug them up really good. Probably uh, well more <laughs> than uh, than 20 foot-pounds. I've got this thing where I don't like my brakes coming loose on me. So I generally over tighten them, which isn't a good thing, but it's just a habit I have and it's a habit I don't intend to break. Uh, also, these bolts here use nylocks. Your T-bolts do not. So if you want to put you a dab of red Loctite on your T-bolts, uh, I wouldn't blame you one bit. This is a temporary brake setup for us. We do plan to uh, switch to a wheel wood four corner setup in the future. So I'm not too worried about it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is install our brake rotors. Because these are universal, you're gonna have to go ahead of time and figure out which bolt holes you're using. I've went ahead and marked all my bolt holes with a uh, Sharpie there. So I know which ones to use. So I'm just gonna slide that guy on. Then I'm gonna take a couple lug nuts and thread them on just to hold our rotor our rotor all the way in place while we're doing the rest of our assembly. The next thing you're going to do is install one of your brake calipers. Now here's where it gets just a, a little bit tricky but not really because which caliper you use for which side is going to be determined by where you place your bracket. So if you've got your brackets on the back side of the wheel, then you're going to use one caliper. If you place them on the front side, then the caliper the caliper is going to be different from side to side. And what dictates that is you want your bleeder nipple here to be at the top of the caliper. So if you see what I'm saying, you know, I can use this caliper on this side 
and the bleeder nipple is at the top. But if I would have mounted the brakes on the front of the wheel and tried to use this caliper, then it would have put the bleeder on the bottom. So I would have to use the other caliper for this side. Hopefully that makes sense. So we'll put our brake pads in. Let's see which way does this guy go? He sits in there just like that. Set our caliper on. And we're going to grab our top pin, run it in from the back. We'll get our bottom pin, run it in too. And using the Torx bit, it says to tighten these up to 30 foot pounds. And 30 foot pounds. Alright, there we go. So that's that side done. I'm going to move over to the other side and get it knocked out with a little music so you don't have to listen to my annoying voice. Now, something I did forget to mention is you want to clean your brake rotors with some brake cleaner before you put them on. Uh, I don't think I said that already but if if i did then there you go i said it twice so don't forget to do it moving on to the uh, driver's side There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The brakes are on. Uh, now, obviously, you know, the pads are loose right now because I can't pump them up because we don't have the brake lines. But the main thing is we didn't have any kinds of issues. Uh, everything just bolted right up. Easy peasy. Now, if I didn't say it before, this brake set is $314. You can step up for $60 more and get calipers that have an emergency brake on them. This is primarily a race car, so I'm not real worried about an emergency brake right now. So I ordered the cheaper set because I was trying to save some money. But in the future, when we go to the wheel woods, I am going to be installing an emergency brake back on it. And uh, I think I kind of explained all that in the video where we installed the rear end. So uh, no emergency brake on these. $55, $60, you can upgrade to e-brakes, uh, but then you're going to have to buy buy the e-brake cable kit and all that jazz too. But that's it guys, that's all there is to it. Installing the low budget brake kit from Quick Performance for your nine inch rear end. Uh, they do make these for obviously different load patterns because you can see this is a universal rotor. Uh, and I am running half inch studs, so these do fit half inch studs. I know some of the kits I saw online, they only fit seven sixteenth studs on the five lug. So uh, this does, this is drilled for, you know, half inch. Uh, looking at it, it may also do five eighths, but I'm not going, don't quote me on that guys, because I'm not sure, uh, but it's not a super tight fit on these lugs. So that is a possibility. 
that's a question you may want to call quick performance and ask them but guys we're about done here we got our rear end in we got our brake hardware installed we have adjusted the proportion valve for the rear disc brakes we got our new holly high ram and snake eater performance 1500 cc injectors in so uh yeah as soon as we get our uh, we're waiting on my cousin Brad to bring us our new charge pipe that he's welding up. And as soon as we get our brake line kit, we can get that put on. Of course, you're going to want to bleed the brakes, so we're, we're going to have to bleed the brakes. Then we can go break in our new rear end and hopefully start making some passes soon and uh, turn it up. I know uh, some of you guys were kind of disappointed that it just ran high sixes a couple months ago. But again, guys, we had it turned pretty much all the way down, low time and low boost. So... Uh, I'm expecting big things out of this car uh, next time we get it to the track. So that's pretty much all I got for you right now. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, share it or at least say, hey, it helped me out. Thanks for what you do. We know it's a pain in the ass filming every time you install a part. <laughs> but seriously, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, those of you who are still here, I'm glad you're still here. Uh, it's been a rough couple months, but uh, yeah, some of you stuck by. I really appreciate that. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about doing a, a little giveaway here pretty soon to show my appreciation. But anyway, that's all I got for you today, guys. So get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.